Hi, I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stahl's CAD Cut Direct, the number one manufacturer in the world of heat transfer vinyl. Today, I'm excited to introduce to you a brand new formulation of heat transfer vinyl from our development labs. That product is called CAD Cut Silicone Dye Block 200. CAD Cut Silicone is a silicone-based heat transfer vinyl that's designed to block dyes in sublimated garments or just to handle polyesters better in general. So screen printers have been using silicone inks for quite some time to address these issues. You see it with the professional sportswear brands with their small logos and insignias. The challenge is screen printing inks are very difficult to work with and we know screen printing is not ideal for personalization for names and numbers. So we've been working on this product for a long time and we're finally excited to release it to you. Let's cut some designs and I'll show you how it applies to sportswear. Silicone comes to you just like any other heat transfer vinyl. We're cutting in a mirror image on the adhesive side of the material. The silicone mounted with the adhesive is onto a carrier that holds all of our design elements together after it's cut. As the name implies, this is a 200 micron thick heat transfer vinyl. It doesn't take much downforce at all to cut through it. On this Graftech CE6000, I'm at a downforce of 13 to 14, depending on my blade sharpness and extension. The equivalent on a Roland is about 130 to 140 grams of downforce. The weeding process for this product is very easy. It doesn't have a sticky backing at all, so it's intended for larger designs, but it's very easy to peel away. You can even grip the material uh, with your fingers only to sort of grab and pull into all the cavities. And with the clean cut, you should have no issues weeding. And let's head over to the heat press to show you how this heat applies. So let's take our white design, position it down. I'm looking to center the number there on the neck line. Cover it with the cover sheet, especially on a cold peel material to ensure it doesn't stick to the heater and start to peel that too early. And as I mentioned, it is a cold peel. So if you're running in a factory with production, you may want to run an, an extra air line. If you're using an air press and you can blow it cool right on the press without having to remove it. Uh, if you're in a small shop, a cookie sheet works well to cool it down or just slide it off the press. Um, hold it against something to cool it down um, or shake it out. So I'm going to hold it against the table really quick, pull some of the heat out off to the side, bring it back into the frame, and then we peel cool. Now let's talk about the finish feel and texture here of silicone. It has, I would say, a rubber-like finish. If you think of a silicone wristband like I have on, you see these uh, common, that's what it feels like. You get the uh, texture to it. You also get um, sort of a rubbery feel, a nice stretch to it. It's really an athletic feel on the garment, uh, and I think your customers are going to like it a lot. So now let's go ahead and pan over, rotate out the platen, and move over to the sleeve print. So I'm going to use the 6 by 10 inch platen on my Hotronics Fusion. Drop on my sublimated sleeve, grab my next print, you'll notice this is true white going across the sleeve, just going to make sure I'm centered, going to cover it with the cover sheet and give it the 10 seconds. Now anytime you change platens you should always uh, check your pressure first to ensure you have accurate pressure locking down. same process where I'm going to peel this cold. I'll just remove it and this is small enough I can hold it against my heat press cart that I have here that's metal that pulls the heat out of it. Remove the carrier. 
when you first press silicone, this is what's unique about the technology. You may see it bleed right away. You may see the dye start to strike through the white print. Don't panic, that's normal. Uh, what we tell you is that silicone is designed to actually let the dyes uh, dissipate or disperse through the face of the film, but that clears within 48 hours. So you wanna make sure you allow 48 hours or put a little note with the order to inform your customer that it will return to a true bright white within 48 hours. Let's show you another application. In this case, I'm gonna go back to my standard 16 by 20 platen. One of the more problematic products out there, you see these from a variety of suppliers, are the Digi Camo performance tees that are fully sublimated or even roller printed which is just a different manufacturing process that can also uh, cause issues with bleeding. Gonna make sure my pressure is correct. Do a little preheat. And then position my design. Now we know you're gonna love the feel of silicone. So we have it in different colors. There's even a black color, although something like this won't bleed through black. Uh, the point is we're giving you uh, choices here. So if you wanna decorate in the same finish, you can. In this case, we're gonna show you how to do a two color. Something very important to realize is that silicone cannot be layered. So what we've actually created on this is a trapping effect where we're going to sort of leave a gap outline or garment gap in between layers. So I'm gonna start by pressing down the red for 10 seconds. I'm gonna cold peel that. Load it back on and then position my white. You'll see once we complete this, the gap space, make sure I didn't move that. You'll see the gap space in between the red and the white layers. We do recommend a cold peel. There is a little bit of a sort of tolerance in that where sometimes you'll be able to just cool it down quickly on the press and release it. So that's CADCUT Silicone Dye Block 200. It's a product that's easy to use. You don't need to be a chemist to understand how to use a silicone product to decorate apparel. It's gonna give you the on-trend, rubbery, athletic feel with results that stay true to color. For more information, visit stalls.com.